Yes, uh, thank you, Enari, for introducing me, and uh, thank you for this opportunity to speak here today. Uh, in the place of uh, introduction, uh, I will not be very innovative, and I will start with uh, uh, praising uh, a Baltic energy market interconnection plan as a format uh, which has uh, greatly developed level of uh, discussions regarding energy markets, uh, regarding electricity and gas in the Baltic region. Uh, and among uh, other things in the field of electricity where uh, we have been uh, especially successful, uh, we have developed uh, also our common understanding uh, on the role of uh, renewable energy, on the role of uh, renewable producers in uh, in uh, electricity market uh, on the top of it uh, also the economic difficulties uh, which the world faced several years ago on the top of that also some uh, recent increase of electricity tariffs in latvia uh, all those things they have uh, greatly contributed to uh, understanding uh, of the sector of renewables and its role uh, in, the, in, the, in the energy policy. And uh, further, in my presentation, uh, I would like to turn to uh, the consequences of this thinking, uh, which uh, has been uh, materialized in Latvia in the recent months or on the recent one and a half year in the retrospective survey of uh, current existing uh, uh, renewable support mechanisms and uh, basically we have uh, come to the uh, to the conclusions that uh, we should review current mechanism and uh, we should uh, uh, seek the new more efficient ways uh, to increase share of renewable energy in our energy portfolio uh, first, uh, uh, some, uh, some figures, some uh, data about transposition of renewable directive in Latvian legislation. It uh, has been done uh, on time and uh, uh, according uh, to the rules uh, set by directive, there, are, there have been several amendments to uh, existing laws and uh, several new uh, cabinet regulations and amendments to the existing ones. Uh, and uh, according uh, to this same uh, renewable directive, uh, uh, we uh, have this uh, national target for the renewable energy by 2020, which is 30% uh, 30, uh, 30 quite high if we compare it uh, to the average level of member states in the EU, uh, rather high even uh, in uh, uh, in terms uh, in terms of region, but uh, there one could one could admit also that um, well uh, this uh, mandatory target is that high thanks to the uh, and thanks to our legacy and thanks to existing uh, large hydropower plants we have, uh, and uh, we could see also that uh, uh, we have been quite successful moving uh, towards this uh, mandatory target of 40% in the past uh, two years. So uh, the share is gradually increasing, but uh, it's increasing thanks to the present uh, support mechanism, and uh, I will turn to this mechanism in my next slides. And uh, then again, there is an overall target of 10% uh, related uh, to renewable energy in transport. Uh, and uh, this share is uh, also increasing gradually and uh, to the large extent currently it's thanks to the mandatory measures uh, taken uh, in relation to uh, fuel blending. Uh, further, furthermore, uh, there are also uh, some uh, surveys on the possibilities to uh, Elect electrificate uh, the rail railway transport, which uh, could significantly add uh, to this uh, to the share. Uh, the current support mechanism provides for uh, mandatory procurement of electricity generated uh, from renewables. Uh, 
In addition to that, uh, projects uh, or uh, renewable developers have the possibility to get uh, additional financing from uh, EU funds and other sources, uh, including, uh, for example, the uh, climate change uh, financial instrument. Uh, and here we see that uh, currently in uh, 2011, uh, most of uh, renewable electricity is produced in uh, large hydropower plants. And this electricity uh, does not get uh, any state support and uh, is uh, sold uh, at the market price. The uh, tiny share of uh, 2043 uh, gigawatt hours is uh, renewable electricity, which, uh, uh, which uh, is sold in terms of mandatory procurement at the uh, increased price. And the yellow share, uh, which is uh, the most, uh, most interesting, is the share of the uh, of the permits which are currently issued, but uh, which uh, has not become a reality so far. Uh, and if if all this uh, all this yellow or as you see it, green green shear becomes uh, becomes a reality, we would uh, uh, we would uh, by far uh, fulfill 2020 target. But uh, the experience and the survey made uh, by the ministry this year shows that uh, uh, it's very unlikely that uh, this uh, will become a reality as only about one third uh, of the permits uh, materialize in the uh, real power plants uh, which, uh, which produce uh, electricity. Uh, this year, uh, this year, the ministry has uh, extensively discussed also the uh, new energy policy framework till uh, 2030, and the core of this uh, policy document is competitiveness of uh, of uh, our economy. That means that, uh, of course, renewable energy will retain its place in the energy portfolio of the country, but. Uh, uh, we will not uh, struggle for achieving any targets by, by any means and at any price, because uh, uh, it's uh, obvious that, uh, uh, that the country or the customers in the country, they are overpaying for, uh, for increased share uh, of uh, renewables currently. Uh, therefore, uh, therefore, this uh, new support mechanism we are working on has to be more uh, more efficient, more market oriented, and uh, uh, and uh, should be should be cheaper for our customers. And it includes that includes also efficiency and uh, market uh, and market orientation. Because uh, the current system we have it's rather inefficient, slow, and unpredictable. As uh, of course the developers of the projects, they have uh, they have their obligations to uh, to construct those power plants and to start uh, electricity production. But uh, uh, it's uh, often not the case, and uh, developers are delaying their projects. Uh, also, the current system uh, leads to electricity price increase, as I mentioned, and. Uh, under the current system, uh, producers, they do not feel responsibility for effectiveness of their projects, and uh, there are no incentives uh, to reduce uh, production price, as they are entitled uh, to stable, stable, income, uh, uh, stable income within the framework of mandatory procurement. Uh, and the third point uh, to which uh, our discussions in uh, Baltic uh, energy market uh, interconnection plan has greatly uh, contributed is the place of renewable energy in electricity market. Because under the current system, uh, renewable producers in Latvia, they are not uh, allowed uh, to sell electricity to any other company than the public trader if they want to retain their subsidies. Uh, we could, uh, uh, we would like to turn away from this pattern and uh, let uh, green electricity to be, to be freely sold on the market. 
uh, some weeks ago, the government has uh, uh, accepted amendments to the current legislation. Uh, and uh, this leads us to the uh, three main points, which means that uh, uh, no uh, more mandatory procurement permits will be issued uh, in, uh, in the coming years, that uh, the a ministry should elaborate and start discussion on the new support mechanism, uh, that uh, uh, the state institutions will have to uh, conduct enhanced uh, supervision of effectiveness and the uh, implementation of the existing projects, uh, which includes uh, inter alia things like uh, uh, observation of construction procedure, uh, the terms of opera operation of uh, uh, existing uh, power plants, the uh, issues related to uh, tax payments by those uh, producers, and the fuel spent, as we have noticed uh, uh, several occasions where, uh, say, uh, the fuel spent in those power plants uh, uh, do not, uh, do not uh, respond to the sustainability uh, requirements. And uh, the support period for the current uh, projects will be strictly limited in time, uh, and there will be five years transitory period for the uh, projects which are close to the end of this uh, support period, but which have uh, uh, additionally and repeatedly in, uh, invested in these projects. Uh, and uh, then shortly about principles of new support, uh, I would like to remind you that uh, discussion on that uh, has uh, barely started, and uh, the general principles of the new support we would propose is the flexibility of total generated amount. That means that uh, there will be uh, no quotas or no strict, uh, uh, no strict limitations for uh, electricity produced from renewables. Uh, this uh, amount uh, should be set by uh, by the by the market. Uh, the reasonable the reasonable costs of uh, of renewable electricity means that uh, uh, well we would like uh, to abstain from uh, uh, from support which is uh, put on the uh, on the part of uh, operation activities uh, we would like to drive uh, renewable energy producers to the market and sell their electricity at the market price. Instead, instead uh, we propose uh, to support uh, the, those projects uh, uh, those projects at the time when power plants are constructed by, by means of uh, grant support uh, uh, to the uh, capital uh, investments in these projects. Uh, and. Uh, Technological neutrality in this sense means that uh, that the government or the state uh, would also uh, abstain from uh, the supporting uh, one or another technology, especially. Uh, rather, the market should decide, uh, the market and the developer should decide which which technology is uh, most suitable at the, uh, for the uh, existing uh, existing. Uh, market situation. Thank you. So we have right away some questions from the floor. Yeah, please. Thank you for your presentation, but uh, I really wonder when new uh, support system will be published in detail because the information that you are presenting here has been around for around a year, I think, since the new Ministry of Economy has been into power. So when, what is the plan of Latvia uh, to make uh, concrete steps in publishing a new support scheme? And another question uh, you said about uh, technology neutrality in the new uh, support scheme. So how would you expect uh, new renewable energy capacities to compete with old uh, uh, Daugava hydro generation capacities? Mm -hmm. And is it, is it is, is the case, actually? Thank you. 
Okay, answer to the first question. Uh, uh, yes, indeed, uh, these discussions, they, uh, uh, they have been around for a while, but uh, the government has, uh, so to say, ceased or abolished the, the, the present system in September, and uh, immediately in September, uh, the ministry has started uh, discussions with the representatives of the renewable sector. Uh, well, a couple of those discussions have uh, taken place in September, uh, where the Ministry presented the general principles. Uh, also in September, those principles, they were presented also to the Electricity Market Board. And uh, uh, we are working currently on uh, the more details on this uh, to continue. According uh, to the schedule, the more precise uh, more precise wording or the more, uh, say, the, uh, the pieces of legislation uh, uh, must become a reality by the end of this year, beginning of the next year. Uh, the, uh, uh, the second question uh, related uh, technological uh, neutrality uh, means basically that, uh, uh, that uh, our intention is to provide support uh, to uh, whatever the means of producing uh, electricity from renewables is uh, at the uh, time of their construction. But uh, the electricity produced, uh, produced by these power plants, it uh, will have to compete uh, on the market. The difference between large, uh, large hydropower plants and uh, small renewable energy units will be that uh, uh, will be that uh, the uh, uh, large hydropower plant cascade uh, uh, has not uh, has not the support uh, or hadn't have the support at the at the time of their construction. So uh, I don't see really a contradiction uh, between uh, between uh, uh, hydro energy sold on the market from the large hydropower plants and the small projects. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. And